What is up guys, it's Mega giving you another deck for Key Evolution. Today guys, we are doing a deck that you've all requested a lot of times, and that is a Lunar Light. But this is no ordinary Lunar Light, this is a Lunar Light combo deck. Showing why, once and for all, the most powerful card in the game, Lunar Light Tiger, is of course banned. It's easily abusable, and this deck alone shows you why it is banned, and why it is never ever gonna come back and back. So without any further ado guys, Let's get into it. Starting us off, guys, it's of course a principal edition, and as you can notice, we're not really in any hand traps apart from a fet veil. It's simply because this is no need to, because this deck is all about powering through negates and interruptions and just keep going on and try and do the infinite negate combo. So, Prince is magician, magician we're running because we're running the magician souls. It is a garnet, but unlike other garnets, she is still useful. By pitching any one of our cards to the graveyard, you expect. She'll summon her. Because she's a dark attribute, comes in handy for our um, Union Carry and also cards such as Perfume and Serenade Dance do have effects that trigger from the graveyard. So you can simply pitch her and do all that stuff. And, and also if you do pitch Zephyrus the Elite, you can re-summon Apprentice Luge Magician because she can play her effects many times as long as you have cards in your hand. We're running a little bit of a Blackwing Engine with Bore of the Sphere, Chris to Crack of the Dawn and Zephyrus the Elite. Zephyrus the Elite you do summon off of the uh, force in there off the Y Strix, making it kind of a garnet. But even if it is in your hand, we have plenty of cards to like get it into the graveyard. So then you can like use its graveyard effect simply by targeting any face up card you control. Can be a spell, can be a monster, and bouncing it back into your hand. Especially summons Zephyrus, and that means Chris and Bora can trigger their abilities. So both of them have the effect. We can special summon them from your hand. Um, hand if you control a black wing. The reason we're controlling like one of each and not like two of a specific one is because if you have like both of these in your hand and no other monsters, you can still pull off the whole combo by going into the first four tricks. We can set the whole thing off. So these two alone can still do the whole combo simply by summoning out both of them. We're using a Fet Veiler simply because because we're using Shade Brigadine, we can't use Imperm. So a Fet Veiler is just basically a cheaper version of an Imp um, of um, of um, infinite permanence. It can only activate during your opponent's turn, so you can't use it during your turn, which is the only downside of a Fet Veiler, and also it can be caught by the grave, so you do have to pay 10 string card when you're doing it. Onto the Lunar Lights running run, Emerald Bird. We don't need to really run more, more than an effect. Is upon being normal spell summoned, you can send Lunar Light from your, ha from your hand to the graveyard in order to draw a card, which means, again, you can pitch the Perfume or, or Serenade Dance because they have Lunar Light in their name, which does come really, really handy. And then you get to draw another card. So basically all you want to try and do is get access to either a level 4 like monster and have kind of like a yellow Martin in the graveyard. So Emerald Bird can kind of do the same as Collider Chick, uh, uh, Chick if you have um, yellow Merton in the graveyard. So that really does come in handy. Collider Chick's effect lets you send any one of our Lunar Lights from our deck or extra deck to the graveyard. So the target you will always be sending is yellow Martin. And, and the best bit is... Collider Chick's effect sends for cost, so that means even if your opponent has like Skill Drain, uh, Effect Veiler, Imperm, Fog Blade, um, Spoiled Savage Dragon, yes, they can negate Collider Chick's effect, but it will still send the monster. So you particularly, it's a wasted um, negate in a way. And the one you really want to send is Yellow Martin. Her effect is you can target any Lunar Light card on the field. Return it to your hand in order to special summon this card from the hand or graveyard. So you always pretty much target your Lunar Light Tiger, bounce it back into your hand to get Yellow Martin out for a free summon. Because obviously, pen, obviously Lunar Light uh, Tiger is a pendulum monster, so it's just basically you can keep playing it as many times as you want and just keep resurrecting Yellow Martin. We have basically three copies of Magician Souls because, again, it's a free summon if you have the Prince Illusion Magician in your deck. And also, you can pitch like you, uh, your spells if you don't need them to draw more cards. Because again, all you particularly want to keep drawing is Lunar Light Tiger or Cloud of Chick or cards to get them into your hand. And all, so like I say, if you do pitch Perfume or Serenade Dance off the souls, you get to draw cards. And then they have their graveyard abilities to trigger as well. So it's basically, it doesn't have a downside. Onto the Apex Avian and Thunderbird. These two are kind of like which introduces the infinite lock. Apex Avian, you get to special summon off of. Um, Simorg and his effect is once per chain, so it is constantly negating if you combine it with Thunderbird. Thunderbird's effect allows it each time it's face up on the field and returns to the hand, you get a special summon it, and that's not once per turn. And Apex Avian's effect is should your opponent activate a, 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 a when your opponent activates a card effect, like spell trap or monster, you could target one Miss Valley monster 
uh, one misvalued card you control, return it to the hand, and if you do, negate and destroy the card. So, because it's misvalued Thunderbird, you can just keep bouncing this card back into your hand to keep negating, and then this thing keeps resummoning itself, which, which produces the infinite lock. We've got one copy of Singing Lanius, which you really, really, really want to get. Even if you draw this card, it's never dead. So you always, after the first thing you're going to summon, is a Force Strix. And if you um, don't have Singing Lanius, you're going to search Singing Lanius. If you do have it, you can search like Blackwing Boar or Chris for the free summon late to on. And basically, Singing Lanius lets you special summon it because you have, a, have an Xyz in play, which you will then go into Y Strix because they're both Wing Beasts. Onto the Pendulum card, we have Lunar Light Tiger. This card alone introduces the infinite locks and is or oh, in, in, in what well, introduces this combo, and this alone is why this card is banned in the TCG. Its effect it, or you mainly use it for its pendulum ability, being you can target one Lunar Light monster in your grave and special summon it. And this is a um, um, and this is a soft once per turn, which means if you have two tigers in your hand and you played both of them in the pendulum scale, you can resurrect two monsters off them, which is kind of broken. And also, if you use stuff like Yellow Murder or Zephyrus the Elite to bounce it back into your hand, you can then play um, the tiger, uh, you can replay the tiger and use its effect all over again, which is really, really powerful. And even if your opponent destroys it, it's... Its main monster effect is if it's destroyed um, sure, by battle or by card effect while it's on the field, which it would be in the pendulum scale, you can target a Lunar Light monster in your grave and special summon it. So even if your opponent outs it, it still summons a monster. So that's why this card is absolutely broken and it's why it is banned and it's why this, why this deck sort of works. We have got two copies of Lower Darkness because a lot of our cards are special. Like so the Lunar Lights are dark, the Black Wings are dark, the Prince Illusion Magician is dark. The uh, magician souls are dark. You've got a load of targets for the lure of darkness to keep drawing those two cards in order to get that tiger and cloud of chicken hand. Two copies of Cold by the Grave, obviously hand traps such as like Effect Veiler, um, Ash Block, some of that stuff really does hurt us. Yes, it can't stop um, um, inf it can't stop Imperm Gamma or Nibiru, but heck, it's not perfect. We've got three copies of Five for Mention Tenki because. Um, Clyde of Chick and Tiger are both Beast Warriors, so let's just add instantly to our hand. If you like, say you've got Tenki and uh, Tiger, you can just add the Clyde of Chick and then you've got full combo. We've got Foolish Burial in order to send Yellow Merton directly to the graveyard. If you, like say you've got Foolish Burial and uh, um, Emerald Bird, that's the only two cards. You can still send Yellow Merton to the graveyard and then you still got full combo because you've got that Tiger and that Emerald Bird in hand. So it, it basically, like... It, again, if you haven't got Clyde check, it really comes in handy. Three copies of Forge Burial Goods. This helps us get Perfume or um, Serenade Dance into the grave to trigger their graveyard effects. L Lunar Light Perfume is basically the monster reborn for the deck because you can target any Lunar Light monster in your grave, special summon it, and then this card has a graveyard effect where you can banish it from your grave, discard any one card, and add a Lunar Light monster from your deck to your hand. And both of these effects aren't once per turn, so you could play all three of them and mill three cards from your hand to draw basically three Lunar Lights into your hand. So this alone basically acts as like another tanky for the day to search it out. And again, like say, if it's in the graveyard, you could pitch like that Zephyrus if it's in your hand and basically just go off from there and have a nice day. Rank up, so um, rank up Magic Soul Save Force is searchable off the Y Strix when you trigger its effect. Basically, this card you're going to use with four Strix to go into Cyber Dragon Infinity by paying half your life points. The main reason why you play this. Upstart Goblin, because like I say, you don't really care if your opponent gains a thousand life points because you can like lock them with the infinite um, negate loop anyway. And again, if you need, if you try and get to those key um, cards, this really does help. On to the trash for running one copy of Lunalight Serenade Dance, which is basically you're not going to play its um, effect or um, effects at all, apart from its graveyard effect where... During the main phase, if this card is in the grave, you can banish it to special summon any Lunar Light from your deck by discarding one card. So again, it's kind of like the same with the Perfume, you have to discard a card. However, on uh, Perfume gets added to your hand, this trap directly summons it to the field. So say you've got Serenade, Dance and Tiger and a way to get Serenade, Dance into the grave. You've got full combo by summoning out Collider, Chick and Tiger without even doing a, any normal summon, which is really, really, really powerful. And also, because it can banish itself from the grave, it doesn't interfere with Shade Brigadine. And Shade Brigadine, if you control no, tra if you have no traps in your grave, you can activate this card the turn you set it, which is a free level 4 monster, so Shade Brigadine can combine with any of our level 4s 
to go into the four tricks to start the combo off. So pretty much Shea Brigadine is just like, say you got Shea Brigadine and the Yellow Murta with uh, Tiger. You could still do full combo as if you, nothing happened because you don't really need, need the client, you don't need the chick because you've got uh, Brigadine to act as a level four monster and you get Yellow Murta into the graveyard by sudden or summoning her. That was really, really great. And that's it for the deck, guys. On to the extra deck. We are running one copy of Abyss Dweller. Great rank four to go into because, say, um, so, so, during your um, end phase, like, on your, like, normal board, you're going to set up. Instead of going into Masquerina to go into Avamite to, like, protect your infinite negate lock, if you know you're against, like, um, graveyard-heavy decks, like Salomon Grades, you could just go into Abyss Dweller instead and then just lock your opponent out to use in the graveyard, which is really powerful for a quick effect. Brotherhood of the Fire Fist, we're going to this um, this simply if you want to get access to a tanky. It's the main reason why you do it, because upon being summoned, you get to set one fire formation, spell or trap, directly from your deck, which is going to be five formation tanky. On to um, Cyber Dragon Infinity, I touched on this with the Soul Shave Force. You summon it off for four strips with Soul Shaved, and then you get to go into Infinity. It is a Omnigate, so should you penetrate a spell trap monster fet, it is negated. It's basically an Xyz version of Apex Avian. And, um,. You could target one face-up monster you put in control, or one face-up monster on the field, I should say, and you get to equip it to Infinity as an overlay unit, so it outs any basically any monster, and um, and it's just a, it's just an imp powerful card. So each time it absorbs monsters, it keeps getting more and more negates. Four tricks. I'm running three of these bad boys. The reason why is because you need two for the combo to work. So say, for instance, if your opponent like negates the first one with like a gamma or an input or something that you can't call by the grave and you still have the cards to pop off, you can just make a second one and just play like you've never been negated, and then you just go through the last one. So the reason I run free is in case one gets negated and you can still do the full combo, because so you, you realistically you do need to for Strixers for the combo. Its effect isn't once per turn, so, well, it's a soft once per turn again, so you can go into a four Strix, use its effect, make a second four Strix, and then trigger its effect. So that's why it is. And basically you get to add one level four Dark Wing Beast monster from your deck to your hand, which is going to be... Um, Singing Lanius or one of the Raid Raptors. Or Blackwing, sorry. We're running um, Time Thief Redor simply because it's two level four monsters. Really easy to go into. Really, really great monster. So it gains. So, um, so during the standby phase, it gets to attach the top card of your opponent's deck to the uh, deck to this card. So it really can help if your opponent's trying to stack the deck. And then depending on which cards it has as overlay units, depending on which effect it has. So. If it has a monster, you can banish it onto the end phase, so you can out a lot of monsters. Like, say you're going to be destroyed by a battle by a card effect, uh, it can just, like, out uh, it might out the field to protect itself. If it has a spell while using this effect, you get to draw a card. And if it has a trap card, you can place one face sort of monster your opponent controls back onto the top of the deck, which then means in the next turn, my phase, you absorb it, basically, which is a really, really sweet effect. We're running Tornado Dragon because it's basically MST on legs. Because during the, it basically is the same effect as MST, you get to destroy one spell or trap as a quick effect. Links, I'm running Bulbasaur Dragon. This kind of helps with OTKs. You don't go to him a lot, but it's so easy to go into Bulbasaur. So, so your opponent somehow like survives the first, like survives the turn that you do the infinite loop on. You can just do the Bulbasaur Dragon and just go for the OTK. Have a nice day. It can attack twice by targeting one monster on the field from attack to defense mode. And if it attacks a monster, it gains half that monster attack points and they lose half the attack. So Bulbasaur source just there for OTKs. IP Masquerina, which we are going to use during your opponent's turn to go into Unicorn or Avamax, depending on the situation. Masquerina can link someone during your opponent's turn really sweet and any monster that it uses with Masquerina cannot be destroyed by card effects. If you have your full combo, which is basically Tiger and Anakali, the chick, you will go into Masquerina during your um, during during the end during the end of your turn, um, turn and then you're basically going to link summon it with um, Union Carrier to either go into a Unicorn or an Avamax, depending on what you need for the situation. If you want to go into Unicorn by discarding one card in your hand, you could target one card in the field, return it to the deck. Really great because it's basically like a free destruction during your opponent's turn. Or you can go into Avamax, and Avamax is kind of like a better version, is like a better card to go into on most occasions. So, it, when it's Link Summoned, it can't be destroyed by card effect. It can't be targeted by card effects if you use Masquerina. It then can't be destroyed by card effects as well. And um, if it battles a special monster, it ha 
it gains that monster's attack points. And also, should your opponent declare an attack, they have to attack Avamag. So the main problem with the infinite negate loop is that you will bounce back the Mist Valley Thunderbird, and then you get special. Then you have to spare. She'll summon it. And if your opponent has a monster with more than 1100 attack points, they can break the infinite negate loop. Because obviously you don't have... You can't rebound back Miss Valley Thunderbird if it's in the graveyard. So by summoning Avamax, they are forced to attack Avamax and leave the little bird in play. So then basically you can keep doing your infinite negate loops. Avamax is like I say, is protecting the Thunderbird. And even if your opponent does out Avamax, if it's, if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can shuffle one card in the field into the deck, which is really, really powerful. One copy of Y Strix. Upon being summoned, you get special on a Dark Wing Beast monster in defense mode, but its effects are negated. So, if you summon Y Strix, 9 times out of 10, you're going to spare to summon Zephyrus the Elite. The only time you want special Zephyrus if it's in your hand. So, uh, the reason why you summon out Zephyrus is because it gets him into the graveyard, and then you basically um, can resurrect Zephyrus due to his ability. And also, it, Y Strix has an effect where if a Raid Raptor exceeds, how, um, plays its effect, you can um, instantly set a rank up magic directly from, your, um, directly from your deck and set it on the field. So when you basically go into the second Y Strix, you trigger up second four Strix, you, you trigger White's ability to search that rank up magic. So even if you don't have it in your opening hand, you still get it and you get to go into infinity. And then you basically link the four Strix and Y Strix away to go into Samorg. Samorg, upon being summoned, cannot be linked so it cannot be targeted by card effects and makes it all winged beast you control cannot be targeted by card effects either so that means some more can't be targeted some more can't be um, can't be um, impermed and it can't be effect veiled and also it means because you can summon apex avian next to its link you have an infinite negate that can't be targeted by card effects which makes it really powerful and Samorg's effect during the end phase, you get special on a Ring Beast monster from your deck, equal to the number of, of unused Spell Trap card zones. So, if there's seven Spell Trap card zones or more that's, that doesn't have a card in them, you get special Apex Avian, which is basically what you're planning to do. And then we finally have Union Carrier. Union Carrier, um, basically any two Darks or any Ring Beast can go into this thing. You're basically going to target Samorg, equipping... Um, Thunderbird 2 because they both have the same attribute which will then give Samorg a thousand more attack points and then obviously Samorg summons out the Apex Avian during the end phase so then there you go you have your infinite loop already set up because the Apex Avian just bounces back Thunderbird and there you go have a nice day and uh, that event obviously like I say you're going to summon Mascarena during your uh, you're going to summon Mascarena then you're either going to link um, you um, carry it off for Unicorn or you're going to link it off to go into Avamax depending on the situation. And that's it for the deck, guys. It's a really straightforward, like, infinite negate loop, just abusing the Lunar Light, Collider Chick, and Tiger. And this alone proves why Tiger is banned and why she is never coming back unless she gets, like, a hard once for a turn effect, which would then kind of put it in check, but it would still see play, I reckon, in the Lunar Light decks. And that's it for the deck. If you guys like it, hit that thumbs up or click subscribing, because everyone does help out the channel grow. And if you ever do, guys, take care and have a great day or night. Thank you.